oh, you know it's going to be a banger of a video if we're starting out with a fucking HuffPo article. I know. I, I think this is the first time we've ever actually used them as a source just because I think in the unfair to regular journalistic standards, they might be the only outlet that's probably a head above CNN. But to be fair to them, in this article at least, it is the best collection of all of the flags in the streets that are outside the National Mall that are going to serve as a reminder of every dead voter in the previous election. I mean, of all of the Americans that couldn't be there for the inauguration. And to be fair, it looks pretty cool, okay? Like, when it's all lit up at night, when... I think Joe Biden should just have to take his oath of office in the middle of the night because that's when all of his big victories took place. But that is just me being editorial here. But you know what? It does look cool. I'm not going to lie. It looks great. But at the same time, people in the streets would have been a whole hell of a lot better. Could Biden draw the numbers that would actually fill up those streets? I think we've seen his rallies leading up to the election. We know that that is a staunch fuck no. But like I said, it does look cool. I like how it looks at night. You know, that's looking directly at the Bill Clinton Monarch Memorial Building. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Washington Monument. My mistake. I'm Canadian after all. But no, we got all this stuff to look forward to tomorrow. And ugh, we got quite a lineup of horseshit that they're going to be doing. There's a, I don't know. I couldn't give less of a fuck of the, what did they call it here earlier? Oh, there's a Latino march who gives a shit, but what, what am I looking for? Oh, uh, an inaugural ball breaking barriers. I could give less of a shit. No, the nationwide COVID-19 memorial. Apparently Biden gave a speech there, but I couldn't be asked. I still have another video to record, so I don't need to be that sleepy for that. But we'll take a look at what the proceedings are supposed to be for the day. So everything is supposed to kick off at around 1030. I don't know if this is proper to my time or if that's Washington local time pretty sure this is washington local time so everything's supposed to start kicking off at about 10 30 so all of those reporters that'll be down there nobody else is allowed to be there but it's going to be streaming on literally everything and i can't wait to see the numbers especially the numbers when joe biden has to put his crispy old hand on that fucking bible he probably is going to be wearing gloves or something so it doesn't burn his flesh but i just can't wait to see the thousands and thousands of people who turn in I didn't say tens of thousands for very specific reasons because the fucking guy only has what 600,000 people subscribed to his YouTube channel where all of the clips from every speech get put up. And if you want a hearty belly laugh for the most popular politician of all time, remember 81 million votes can't be wrong and don't bother trying to ask if you can clarify those numbers, but to only pull 600 thousand youtube subscribers and to get about what average of about 1200 views per video <laughs> oh my god it's it's so great that this is all going to be virtual and you'll be able to watch it on youtube facebook twitter twitch amazon prime video microsoft bing what the fuck how do you watch stuff on bing whatever news now from fox and att AT&T, Uverse, Direct TV, and uh, the Biden inaugural dot org slash accessibility if you don't have access to any of those, which how would you be watching this recap of things to come if you weren't able to watch on any of those other platforms? Anyways, anyways, but here's where it gets especially cringy and it starts at what? Yeah, 10 o'clock to coincide with kicking off a festivity tomorrow morning. The Presidential Inauguration Committee, that's what PIC stands for, I had to look it up, will host a first ever curated live stream for young Americans. Ugh. I'd imagine this is probably going to replace a couple of history classes that are happening. And um, for any of the kids that are actually in schools right now, they'll probably have to watch this a drek. For young Americans before and during the inaugural ceremonies, the live stream hosted by award-winning entertainer and advocate, ugh, Kiki Palmer. Uh, should I know that person? Probably not. We'll feature a special message from Dr. Jill Biden, PhD, MD, whatever. Commentary from historians Doris Kearns Goodwin and Erica Armstrong Dunbar. I'm sure that they do great work in their fields. I couldn't be asked to look at what they actually do. I'm sure that they're propagandists at some level. A segment on presidential pets produced. Oh, this is literal AIDS. If your kids have to watch this tomorrow, just make sure that they call in sick and just let them eat paste at home because that would be less damaging to their brain than actually 
having to watch any of this crap. Oh, and then every living president, except for, well, the obvious one and um, the very, very old one, will be there so they can lay a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery in order to promise all of the fallen soldiers that they will not be alone for long because there are some countries out there that just really need some freedom in the very near future. But that's all the highlights until 8.30 at night. Oh boy, Tom Hanks is hosting the Celebrating America primetime special because all of these celebrities have been cooked, cooped up, <laughs> cooped up in their homes for far too long and they need to get out there because boy, did they make such a big difference in this election because remember, 81 million votes cannot be wrong. So we get another heaping helping of horseshit from the likes of Aunt Clemens, who... John Bon Jovi, the Jersey bag of shit who drove a nail in 80s metal. Fuck him, fuck his music. The Foo Fighters, I don't mind them, but I also wouldn't go out of the way to go see them. John Legend, Eva Longoria, Tweaks Lovato, oh, and that other Jersey hack, Bruce Springsteen, Justin Timberlake, and Kerry Washington. Boy, I cannot wait to not watch that. I would literally rather be plucking out my balls hair, ball hair individually. Fuck, if given the choice, I'd rather pluck out my neighbor's ball hair than watch this. That will be distilled cancer at a level and which will be subjugated to for a very long time. I wish I could be more optimistic, but this is the best it gets. It's literally all downhill from there because the 21st Biden's first full day in office, he is uh, just going right off the rails. That whole moderate thing is, a, oh boy, is it fucking way into the future. Because Biden's administration's economic policy to address the economy? No. Race, gender equality, and climate change. Because reasons. Well, I'd want to address the climate too. If my hair was that thin, I would not want it to be pushed anywhere out of place because I would just look silly. President-elect Joe Biden's economic team has signaled its intentions to be the first presidential administration ever to create economic policy based around identity-based issues like race, gender equality, and uh, in addition to climate change, Axios reports that the incoming administration intends to build its policy around non-traditional subjects rather than adhere to traditional indicators of healthy economies like the GDP or jet debt ratios because it will not perform well if it has to stand the test of time against traditional factors because raising the minimum wage is going to immediately kill off any sort of recovery. Keep pumping in fake inflation by a stimulus checks instead of just letting everything open. Oh, and he's even wanting to just lock everything down for another 100 days and join the places over in the EU that want to lock down until after Easter. So, yeah, um, you guys will have a lot of free time on your hand. Uh, hopefully you enjoy that 90-minute presentation by the likes of Tom Hanks, Demi Lovato, and uh, John Legend. Hopefully you enjoy that. That's apparently what your great-great-great-grandparents voted for you for. According to the Axios report, the change in policy will shift power from Wall Street to the Main Street because people in Scranton. Nah. The Biden D.C. administration made its first indication of the policy shift with Biden's expected nomination of Gary Gensler, a longtime opponent of Wall Street. <laughs> if we take a look at his contributions, I highly doubt that he's an opponent of Wall Street to lead to the Security and Exchange Commissions. He will be flanked by Senator Sherrod Brown, who will head the Senate Banking Committee. He said something stupid, and we'll have to go back to more of these picks in the future because they're going to be the people crippling the world's economy in order to facilitate the Great Reset. So uh, just put a little pin and section off the name Sherrod Brown in your mind because we'll eventually have to get back to him. Axios has identified the planned economy policy as visibly to the left of Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. That's not good. That's not good. You could just throw George W. Bush in there because it was for all intents and purposes. Just the H.W., W., Clinton, and Barack Obama. That was their entire economic malaise that we all went through. Like, everything was good under Clinton, but it, it, it that was the peak. And that was when I was, like, shit in my pants. I was two or three years old when he first got into office. Biden's economic policies are being driven by the progressive elements of the Democratic Party and will be led by incoming Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who will be the first woman to lead the Treasury Department in uh, 231 years. And she's the one who said a $15 minimum wage will have very minimal impact on the economy. She is fucking retarded. But not the worst one. Not the worst one. Uh, figure this one out. Figure this one the fuck out. 
Joe Biden selects Pennsylvania transgender health official Rachel Levin for the Home Health Secretary. I think that's what it stands for. I don't know. Oh, Health and Human Services. Forgive me. Forgive that. President-elect Joe Biden announced Tuesday that he had chosen Dr. Rachel don't call me Ray Levin, to serve as the Assistant Secretary of Health for the Department of Health and Human Services. Levin, board Richard Levin, oh, Dick Levin, is an openly transgendered, yeah, it's really hard to hide that Cocker Spaniel good look without having to explain what the fuck happened. My money's on an overly handsy uncle. She is a historic and deeply qualified choice to lead our administration's health efforts, said somebody who told what Biden needed to say. Praising Levin's steady leadership and essential expertise, I'm sure she has terrific expertise. Levin drew criticism for months for allowing stable coronavirus patients to be returned to nursing homes during the pandemic, received blame for the virus skyrocketing among elderly in those facilities, leading to the skyrocketing deaths in Pennsylvania. But that's a great person that we're going to have in the fucking Health and Human Services Department and not in an insignificant position. Yeah, an assistant secretary of health. So that's just one of them. We got many more people, but who knows if they're actually going to get confirmed because at least one goddamn good, 100% good senator still exists. Even though he got death threats, people showed up to his house People accosted his wife and his young child. He even had his new book that's coming out taken off of one publishing house and another one picked it up. I don't know who is, but I figured somebody would pick up the slack. We're talking about Mr. Josh Hawley, Senator Josh Hawley to his friends. He is making sure that the Homeland Security nominee who we'll get to, and he has very good reasons in not wanting a quick confirmation to this fucking bag of shit. Senator Josh Hawley said on Tuesday he would place a hold on President-elect Joe Biden's choice to lead the Department of Homeland Security. He made the announcement hours after Senate Homeland Security Committee ended its hearing with Alejandro Mayorkas. Sure. Hawley said that he took issue with the answers given by Mayorkas about how he will secure the U.S.-Mexican border. I don't know. We just let them in. Mr. Mayorkas has not adequately explained how he will enforce federal law and secure the southern border given President-elect Biden's promise to roll back major enforcement and security measures. I'm glad that we just covered all of the ones that President Trump put into place and that Biden's immediately going to reverse because 11 million, probably a lot more than that, Illegal immigrants, legal aliens, whatever you want to call them, and I will not call them undocumented, will be given amnesty right away because moderate Joe Biden's in place. Remember, guys, he's, he's stability. No more malarkey from Joe. Just today, he declined to say he would enforce the laws Congress has already passed to secure the border wall system. Given this, I cannot consent to skip the standard vetting process and fast track this nomination when so many questions remain unanswered. Delicious. Ah, oh, boy. I wish there were a lot more like you out there, Josh. I have never said that before in my life. That's a joke literally only I will get. Mayork has previously served as a deputy secretary of DHS on the Obama administration. When he was confirmed in 2013, he did not earn any Republican votes in the Senate. Yeah, so why should we fast track him now? Do you think that he's uh, improved his positions going forward? Highly unlikely. During an exchange on Tuesday's hearing, Mayorkas... Uh, was asked about whether he would use $1.4 billion in funds slated for the border wall, a chief 2015 campaign promise of President Donald Trump. If I may strike at a fundamental point that I believe you were inquiring of, which is, will I follow the law and execution of my responsibility should I have the privilege of serving as the Secretary of Homeland Security? And the answer is yes, I will follow the law and I would need to do and what I would need to do is to understand what law provides with respect to the obligations of funds to construct a border wall and then see what the opportunities are to discontinue any such obligations. Yeah, so I made reference to it, I think, in a couple videos and then also in the farewell address video that um, yeah, Biden's going to be tearing up that border wall. And he is chief among the reasons why I'm thinking that. And it's fairly fucking obvious that they want to. Trump oversaw the, yes, 450 miles. And that's why he was down in Texas. Not because he was staging a big coup at the Alamo. Like a bunch of fucking creepy Q people were thinking. Linwood, fucking dork. About two years ago, Trump declared a national emergency to redirect funding to the wall. 
And Mayorkas in the hearing said that the Trump plan for migrants to remain in Mexico would not be rescinded immediately, saying it cannot be accomplished with just the flick of a switch. Mayorkas said that I would not abolish the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency overrun, oh, overseen by the DHS. It came as some leftist members of Congress, including, ugh, said, an, <laughs> said the agency should be scrap stop being so hoity-toity with your words epoch times that's just some of the insanity that we can expect over the next few years and it's going to directly have an effect up here in canada like we've seen day one the keystone xl pipeline is supposed to be cancelled which directly affects any sort of a economic recovery up here in canada because if you're justin trudeau the country ends at the manitoba border and anything west of that is just i don't know hillbilly land in his opinion but that's where all your money comes from fuck face and all of that mass immigration yeah it doesn't just stay there they just keep coming up north because there's free stuff across that northern border but maybe it might just stay in the united states going forward because biden's just promising everybody free stuff free health care free amnesty citizenship that is free money fuck it you can all live on the government tit just see how weird it gets and who can be held accountable the next time that the vote rolls around just need to make sure that all of the election reforms need to get pushed through these house at the state level in order to enact real change because we've seen that the laws weren't taken into account the first time so you can't let it happen again that is a part of turning this ship around because they may or may not have played fast and loose with the rules the first time around wink wink nudge nudge you just don't let them do it again because you see what kind of fucking insanity they're doing even before kamala hip checks biden out of the way so she can take that oath of office and become the 46th president she's still penciled in for the 47 so if i was trump i would just start picking Picking out the uh, hats that already are stitched with a 48 on the side. Just uh, keep that number close there, Don. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.